When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm, no matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948. An ancient wall, over 93 miles long, whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists, have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Kat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology in Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast, south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, if we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University, in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, yet now lost, civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. When Austrian explorer Arthur Poznanski performed a study on Puma Punku in 1926, he later hypothesized that it was, in fact, one of the oldest archaeological sites on the face of the Earth, an ancient ruin dating back at least 15,000 years ago. Poznanski was one of the first explorers of the modern age to have ever investigated Puma Punku's incredible existence. But as our regular viewers would have predicted, his hypothesis is staunchly denied by academics worldwide. Yet regardless of this, his sound reasoning, and indeed that of many other critically-minded individuals, means that his theory is one many others have arrived at, thus it continues to have many supporters to this day. And although mainstream academia persists in their attempts to place this amazing and largely inexplicable site's date of construction within permitted timelines, claiming to have carbon dating done at the site which places its origins at around 500 BC, supporters of a greater age dismiss this dating as unreliable, and due to our own in-depth and many years of investigative experience regarding these ruins, tend to agree that the site is indeed far older, and due to there having been an ice age around 10,000 years ago. This dating made by Poznanski would put it right where one would expect to have found it if it was indeed the work of a pre-cataclysmic civilization, with Puma Punku being a surviving relic of their incredible legacy. Additionally, archaeologist and researcher Neil Steed has also investigated a relationship with astronomical alignments. He discovered intriguing supporting evidence for this controversial opinion finding that it was built to coincide with winter and summer solstice and a precise alignment with the spring equinox as well. However, these events would have only been perfectly aligned with the temples over 17,000 years ago. We have long argued against a field of study that is not only assumptive in method, but is also conspiratorial in nature. Any dating of any relic which cannot be explained is merely an attempt to muddy the waters of understanding often obscured with an in-depth volley of detailed and competent investigations into civilizations, we posit merely re-inhabited said sites within known recent well-studied history. 
This convincing tale of events, however, is short-lived if one explores any of the said sites with a logical eye. One soon finds that many characteristics on display are not only found globally, which on its own is compelling proof of a past global superpower, but the countless trilithons, enormous megaliths some reaching into the thousands of tons, along with highly advanced, incredibly accurate, yet unknown masonry techniques, all tell a story which academics who never seem to mention said features cannot explain. Not to mention melting pots of ancient academic anomalies, such as that of Puma Punku. How can anyone logically claim that the astonishing precision on show at the site, along with the many basalt megalithic platforms weighing many hundreds of tons, all indicative of a past highly capable, technologically advanced civilization, once having been responsible and once one grasps just how many holes can be found within mainstream opinion, they can be forgiven for doubting said tale of events, especially when those who tell such tales actively attempt to conceal such unexplainable features. Who built Puma Punku? Is it really over 15,000 years old? How would one cut such precision stonework without precision machinery? It is a place which we find highly compelling. Dorchester, Massachusetts, USA, in 1852, at Meeting House Quarry, workers were using dynamite to break up the bedrock, when an explosion threw an artifact into the light of day, after spending many thousands of years under the earth. According to geologists, the Roxbury Rock, in which this mysterious artifact was embedded, has been dated as having accumulated between 570 and 593 million years ago, during the Eddia Cannon period. Imagine their surprise, when workers spotted a metallic object amongst the debris of the explosion, still partially embedded in a chunk of rock, and now sheared into two pieces from the forces of the blast. A zinc vase covered in flower decorations painted in solid silver. The bell-shaped pot is around four and a half inches tall and about six and a half inches long, and was noted as being exquisitely made. The age of the vase has been heavily debated amongst specialists, with many struggling to produce ages smaller than 100,000 years. Additionally, the species of flowers and plants that are illustrated upon the vase also went extinct over 100,000 years ago. Not surprisingly, but rather predictably, the pot along with all authenticated documentation regarding its discovery, mysteriously vanished without trace shortly before a full investigation into its amazing history could take place. The initial discovery was covered on June 5, 1852, from the publication of the magazine Scientific American, which confirms its authenticity, as indeed being found embedded in the solid ancient stone, 15 feet below the surface. But shortly after this coverage, like so many other amazing objects found around the world vanished without trace. Who made this amazing artifact, when was it made? If we go by the age of the rock in which it was discovered, it is amazingly over 500 million years old, but we may never know.
it upsets all our ideas about what the ancient Greeks were capable of. It rewrites the history of technology. It tells us that things were going on in second century BC Greece, which we had no idea about.